What up, everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about the five biggest winners and losers of Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4. And I'm not talking about dead characters. R.I.P. to Monet, Noma, Anya, and every other character that we lost in Season 4. And make sure to go ahead and drop your list in the comments section. Starting out with the biggest losers of Power Book 2 Ghost. And at number five, I have Brayden Weston. Brayden had a rough season after his family lost everything in Season 3 when the Weston Ponzi scheme was exposed. And because Brayden saved Tariq at Noma's warehouse at the end of Season 3, Season 4 started off with Kane walking into the Weston's household and beating the brakes off of Trace and demanding that they tell him where Brayden was. While the other Tejada brother Drew planned on using Becca as leverage to get to Brayden, because of that, when Brayden came home later that night, his father, Robert Weston, disowned him and told him not to come around anymore. Then Brayden met a girl who turned his whole world upside down, Elle. But Elle was a drug addict, and she got Brayden into doing coke with her. It started out just something he did when he was hanging out with Elle. But throughout the season, we saw the cocaine use from Brayden progress more and more, even causing Brayden to get so high that he jumped on stage during one of Elle's group's performances and messed up being able to move product through their merch. Then, after Elle overdosed, Brayden thought he would do something noble by killing the dealer that gave Elle the bad product. And when he told Elle about it, she was disgusted about this and ended their relationship. Then at the end of season 4, Tariq demoted Brayden to employee from partner and let him know if he messed up again, he's out. But this is part of the reason why Brayden is only at number 5 because he's still in a good position taking over the fight clubs and about to get the biggest bag of his life like Tariq told him. Getting me to the 4th biggest loser of season 4, Effie Morales. I got Effie slightly ranked above Brayden concerning the biggest losers because the difference between the two is that Effie doesn't want to be in the game at all. While Brayden loves the life and only really had that one time in season 3 after killing his uncle when he had doubts and considered getting out. Effie had her dream right at her fingertips. She got accepted to Stanford Engineering and she had been hustling hard to save the money to pay for her co-term. But she sacrificed that all to help Kane Dehada, who was a wanted fugitive after killing Noma, giving him the entire bag of money so he could start over somewhere, forcing Effie to stay in the game working for Tariq. One thing concerning both Brayden and Effie, though, is that it should be a little better for them now that they're working for Tariq instead of Noma. But also, like Brayden lost his girl, Effie also lost her boyfriend Kane for now because he had to go on the run. My third biggest loser of season 4 is Diana Tejada. Diana had a very hard season 4 and she did get my consideration for number 1. But Diana had a very rough season 4 first finding out she was pregnant while being a college student. Then Monet, Kane, and Tariq found out what her and Drew did in Season 3 when she delivered Tasha's address to Kate and had to go on the run pregnant without anyone else knowing. Then after she decided to keep the baby and go all in on this child, she was beat down by Felicia Lewis and lost her baby. In retaliation, Diana killed Felicia Lewis but found out she had a young son so this only made Diana feel guilt and shame. Because everything going on, she straight up walked out of the Stansfield classroom during an exam, ensuring that she would fail that class. Soon after that, her mother Monet was killed, her brother Kane had to go on the run, and her other brother Drew was leaving the country, leaving Diana all alone and by herself for the first time in her life. So to beat that big of a loss, the number one and two biggest losers must be down real bad. And that's true. At number two, I have Kane Dehada. Like Effie, he lost his dream that he was so close to being the next Bumpy Johnson, Frank Lucas, or Nicky Barnes. But he also lost his mother, who he loved so much. But what puts Kane at number two on this list ahead of the other three is the fact that he's now a wanted fugitive whose face is all over the news. So Kane will never be safe again and will spend the rest of his life looking over his shoulder for real. 
and will never be able to trust anyone like that again to be able to let them know who he really is. Because one wrong move and he's either in prison for life or he's in another shootout where he might die next time. But not even that tops my biggest loser of season 4, Detective Don Carter. And he's the biggest loser for one reason only, his finish. Like Kane, Carter ran the board for most of season 4. But it's not where you start. But it's all about where you finish. And Carter is a cop who's also a cop killer and will now be looking at life in prison. Unless he's protected really good, that will be a very short life because all the people he put behind bars, there'll be someone coming for him on the inside. Getting me to the biggest winners of season 4. At number 5, I have Nico Halster, who went from being under Carter in the task force to running the task force himself and getting a real big payday now that he's working for Tariq. Nico was also the cop who arrested Carter for the murder of Kamal Tate, so a cop arresting another cop will make Nico look like he's really honorable and take all the eyes off him, and whatever Carter tries to say about him will be discredited. My fourth biggest winner of season 4 is Drew Tejada. Going back to season 1, Drew never wanted to be in the game in the first place. He wanted to draw and hang out at Stansfield with Everett. And if his family wouldn't have got in the way, he would be sitting comfortable in life right now as an NBA housewife. Neither though Drew did suffer the loss of his mother in season 4 and his father in season 3. It doesn't hit as hard with him as it did Diana and Kane. Not saying that he didn't feel the pain too. But unlike Diana and Kane, Drew actually gets a second chance and a chance to live his dream, moving to Paris to work on his art. Getting me to the third biggest winner of Power Book 2 Ghost Season 4, Tariq St. Patrick. Tariq concludes the series as the biggest drug dealer in New York City, replacing Noma, cutting out the middle bitch, and working directly with her brother. But that still doesn't put Tariq at the number one spot for me, because his goal was to be with his family, and he didn't achieve that. And also because he's still in the game, and either though he is the ghost in the machine, but at the end of the day, as his father learned, that can still go left real quick. At number 2 for the biggest winner of season 4, I have Davis McLean. Davis McLean started off the season suspended from practicing law, and his wife Marilyn was divorcing him, taking half of everything. Putting Davis at a low he hadn't experienced in years since before becoming a lawyer. But like I said about Carter and Kane, it's not about where you started, it's all about where you finish. And Davis finished getting his law license back, so it was back to business as usual. But in addition to that, he's also working for Tariq St. Patrick, New York's biggest drug dealer, making sure his money stays clean. Davis originally took 20% from Tariq when he hooked him up with Zion. I'm guessing the arrangement is about the same for Davis to keep Tariq's money clean. But the biggest winner of Power Book 2 is Tasha St. Patrick. She started out the series in jail on trial for murder of her husband, James St. Patrick. And when season 4 started, she was working at Shop Depot being harassed by the store manager. And like I said several times in this video... It's not about where you started, but about where you finish. And either though most mothers don't want their children in the drug game, other than maybe Monet Tejada, but at the same time, Tasha accepted Tariq for who he was all the way back in Season 6 of Power. And now that Tariq has that big kingpin money, and he told Tasha he was going to move her, Estelle, and Yaz somewhere real nice where she won't have to work anymore. I'm thinking he got them a big house out in the country or suburbs, probably somewhere down south in Florida, Georgia, maybe Cali, where the weather's real good so that Tasha can just sit back and enjoy her life. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.